In this video, we are going to understand the term geomorphic process. So to understand this word geomorphic, I'll have to divide this into two parts. The first one is geo and the second part is morphic. The meaning of the term geo is earth. That's why geography is called as the study of earth. And the meaning of the other term morphic is, is shape, form or structure. So if we combine both the term, we get to know that what were the reasons behind the formation of the Earth's surface. So if you see the Earth's surface is uneven, it is not smooth, it is not plain. So somewhere you'll find uplands and then there are some places which have lowlands, you know, depression sort of a thing. So geomorphic process tells us about what are the reasons behind that, why the Earth is like that. So basically there are two forces that are the reason behind the unevenness of the Earth's surface. They are, the first one is endogenic forces and the second one is exogenic forces. Let me just make some space so that you can see it more properly. So to understand the word endogenic forces, we have to look at this term endogenic. So in this endo, the word endo stands for internal. So basically endogenic forces are internal. They are those forces that are generated within the Earth's surface. And the term exogenic, if you look at this term exo, this means external or outside. So exogenic forces are those forces that acts on the Earth's surface from outside. So always remember endo means internal and exo means external. Great, now that we are done with the definition of the terms, now let's get to know what are these exact forces. Let's make some more space to understand this. So as I said, endogenic forces are internal and they are generated within the Earth's surface. So now the question is, what are these forces? So to understand this, you just have to think first, what happens inside the Earth's surface? Or what happens in the interior of the Earth? So the Earth has different layers. In this mantle, which is just below the crust, is filled with molten rocks known as magma. And magma is continuously moving in circular manner. This movement of magma in the mantle creates convection currents and this is what causes the plates which includes oceanic as well as continental crust to move. Earthquakes are also caused because of this. Then volcanic eruption takes place because of this. So all these are endogenic forces that arises from within. Now the other force that is the exogenic forces, this acts on Earth's surface from outside. For example, sunlight. It is constantly heating up the Earth's surface. Then we have rain, which is responsible for weathering of rocks. Then we have wind. That takes the soil from one place to another. Then we have ice, glacier. When it melts, it is again responsible for carrying the soil from one place to another. So in a nutshell, we can say the actions of exogenic forces result in wearing down and filling up the Earth's surface. Now I want you to imagine this line as the surface of the earth, that is the crust. When endogenic forces hits this layer, you can see the changes on outside, in this case the other side of the line. Similarly, now when exogenic forces hits this line, that changes that you saw due to endogenic forces, those gets weathered down or simply reduces down and this keeps on happening at a different rate and pace. Due to this timing, this line which is the earth's crust has this bumpy ups and downs that gives it an uneven form. And that's why our Earth's surface is not even. Somewhere you'll find uplands and somewhere you'll see lowlands or depression.